Hello everybody, welcome back to the Fermi Simulator 25 tips and tricks video. Today we're going to be talking about productions and specifically we're going to be talking about the various output methods of productions from storing to selling and distribution. What do all of those things mean and how can you use them to your benefit? And in order to do this demonstration, I've set up what is probably the most complex and involved production chains in Farm Sim 25, and that is the production of cake. Because cake is gonna require flour, and flour is gonna require the grain mill. So we've got the grain mill set up with some wheat, and it is gonna be producing flour. We also have the dairy, and the dairy has been set up with cow milk, and the dairy is gonna be needed in order to make bottled milk and butter, again, for our cake production. I have a sugar mill set up with sugar beets, and it is gonna be producing sugar, again, for the bakery, for that cake production. I have a greenhouse set up, and the greenhouse is growing strawberries currently, and again, the strawberries are gonna be needed for the cake production. We need eggs for our cake, and for that, we have a chicken coop set up right here, and then, ultimately, the destination of all of those goods is gonna come over here to our bakery, for the ultimate production of cakes. Now let's look at the cake recipe just to go over it once again. We have flour, sugar, bottled milk, butter, eggs, and strawberries to make our cakes. And we have various ways of sending our goods to our bakery. So let's come back here and let's talk about things. Let's start at a grain mill. We are producing wheat flour. Storing simply means that when the production produces its product and when enough product has been produced in order to spawn a pallet, it will spawn a pallet at the pallet output point for the particular production. And then you as a player are gonna be responsible for transporting that good wherever you want it to go. Do you wanna store it? Do you wanna sell it? or do you wanna put it as an input for some other production? So if we leave everything set to storing, we will manually have to transport our flour, our bottled milk, our butter, our strawberries, as well as our sugar and our eggs to the bakery. It's quite a lot of bit of work, especially if they're not all centrally located like they are here on this video. Well, what we could also do is we could come here and we could change this to distributing. And what distributing means is that the game will automatically send at the top of the hour, however much product has been produced to a production that is downstream. So what that means is wheat will be sent at the top of the hour to our bakery. And we'll see it pop up here as a flour input. Dairy. We can take our butter and we can change this to distributing. We can change our bottled milk to distributing. And again, once these have been produced at the top of the hour, we will get this much product transported to our bakery. See where I'm going here? Let's change this to distributing and our sugar once again to distributing. Now there is one little caveat with the base game, we cannot distribute animal outputs. I can't tell the chicken coop to just auto send its eggs over to the bakery. I wish I could, but I can't do it. So we're gonna have to transport still manually our eggs to the bakery. For the purpose of this video, I've kind of cheated a little bit and we already have 5,000 leaves worth of eggs in the bakery. Now let's fast forward an hour and see what this all looks like at 1 p.m. All right, it's one o'clock. Let's go ahead and check. So if we take a look at our bakery, we now have 123 liters worth of butter, 404 liters worth of flour, 193 liters worth of bottled milk, 169 liters of strawberries and 85 liters of sugar. So if we came here and we activated our cake production, 
Well, we now have all of the inputs we need in order to make cakes. We're gonna be able to make cakes. And if we leave it at storing, again, the cakes are gonna produce pallets and they're gonna spawn over at the bakery. Now, you know how the sugar mill makes sugar. And we told the sugar to distribute. And I mentioned it's gonna to distribute to downline production. Well, the dairy also accepts sugar. So look, the sugar, the dairy has now 446 liters worth of sugar. What? The bakery only has 85 liters of sugar. What? Yeah, so here's the caveat. If you set things to distributing, they are going to distribute automatically down line to any production that might require it, including productions that you may or may not basically want to go there. Like I mentioned, the dairy is now getting sugar. Well, we can't turn that off, okay? So it's gonna be an even split, typically. I'm not really sure why we didn't see that in our demonstration here. Let's fast forward to two o'clock and now take a look. So we now have at our dairy, 905 liters worth of sugar. At our bakery, we have 159 liters worth of sugar. And we have produced 40 liters worth of cakes. Now my only assumption is maybe, just maybe the differential here is the fact that we are producing something with sugar at the bakery as opposed to the dairy is just holding the sugar and not actually doing anything with it. But in general, if you have more productions downline that require a particular output that you are distributing, then it's gonna be split between those productions. Now, the easy way to fix that would be to come here and change our sugar mill to storing. And if we do that, then all the sugar that it produces will again, spawn as pallets and when it spawns as a pallet we can then manually take that product to the specific production that we want now is there a cost to this not really it's it's kind of it's kind of a free thing so here we have you know we've spawned our pallet of sugar and if we wanted this sugar now to go specifically to the bakery, well, we'd have to pick it up with pallet forks and take it over there. That way we knew that 100% of the 1,000 liters worth of sugar was going where we intended it to go. Now let's talk about the last option, the last output option, which is selling. So if we go to our bakery and we have 119 liters worth of cake. If we happen to change it from storing to selling, what's gonna happen is at the top of the hour, the game is going to auto sell whatever is in storage, okay? So at the top of the hour, it's gonna sell about 119 liters worth of product. So let's go ahead and fast forward this to the top of the hour. And it is now, after the hour, we can see our cake is now zero. And if we come down here to our finance screen, and we're going to see sold products. And we have $1,186 of sold products. Well, the only thing that we've sold has been the cakes. If you have a whole lot of production, and you just feel like you're running around and you are transporting pallets to and from the productions a lot, we'll set them to distribute. If you feel that you're just spending a whole lot of time selling stuff at the productions, then set it to auto sell. But there's a caveat. And the caveat is you're not gonna get all the money you could have gotten if you sold that product manually. So I have tested nearly fast forwarding an entire year. I think I fast forward about nine months. And every time that I checked, I sold a thousand liters worth of cakes once a month 
for nine months. And what I found was on average, the price that I sold my cakes for was between 10 to 13% less than the average of these four selling prices for the given month. So if you take all four of these and add them up, you're going to have an average price of 10825 Now, we didn't sell 1,000 liters worth of cake, and that's why we don't see 90 to 88% of the price reflected here. But if we did sell 1,000 liters worth of cake, then we would see that reflected here. So let's go ahead and just sheet some cake in and fast forward an hour and see what we get. So I'm going to also stop production of my cake here because I don't want to affect my numbers by too terrible much. We already have eight extra liters worth of cake. That's not going to mess up the numbers too terrible bad. But you see we have 1,008 liters worth of cake. Since we are set to selling, it is not spawning a pallet. Anything that spawns on the pallet area cannot be automatically sold. So if you have this pallet area with one, two, three, five pallets, and then you set it to selling, don't expect those pallets to go anywhere. You're gonna have to transport them yourself. But once you clear that area, no new pallets will spawn. All right, we are at the top of the hour now. So let's go back here. You see our 1,008 liters worth of cakes are gone. Come back here to our finance screen. We now have $10,941 from sold products. But remember, we had $1,186 previously. So let's just subtract that from 10941 And we have $9,755. Remember our average of $10,825. And then we're going to divide that by $9,755. And that's going to basically give us a differential of 90%. So we sold our product at 90% the price that we could have sold it for if we sold it for the average of here. Now, of course, we could have gotten more money because we could have picked to sell it at the restaurant, which is listed as 11170 versus the average price, which was 10825 of these four. But at any rate, you do lose a little bit of money from what you could have sold the product for if you sold it manually by picking up the pallets and transporting it to the best possible place to sell it. So time is money, right? If you're not spending that much time loading up the pallets and putting them on a trailer and driving them to a possible sell point, then it's worth your time and it's worth the money in order to continue to do that. But if you find that you are spending a significant portion of time in loading up all of the pallets from maybe the myriad of productions that you have activated, then you're finding a hard time to do anything other than sell the pallets from your various productions. Well, you may find it worth the while to take a little bit of a hit on what revenue you're gonna earn because of the fact that you're able to do other things. And therefore, you're actually able to earn money, more money, for the time saved and not having to transport and ultimately get the absolute top dollar of your production because now you're able to do more farm work. You're able to do more forestry work or whatever else. So to summarize once again, with respect to the three options here. Selling is going to auto sell at the top of the hour, however much product is in the output. It doesn't wait for you to have a full pallet. It will just sell however much is here at the top of the hour for anywhere between 90 and 88% of what you could have gotten on average on that given month. If you set this to distributing, what you will see is your outputs will go downstream to other productions with no particular rhyme or reason 
it will split, for example, your sugar mill will split your sugar production downstream to anything that takes sugar, even if you don't require sugar in whatever you're currently producing. So for example, here, our dairy, our dairy got sugar, as well as our bakery received sugar in that auto distribution. If you don't want that to happen, then simply change it over to storing, which is the default, and storing will cause the production to store that product until it has enough to spawn a pallet, at which time it will spawn a pallet in the pallet output area, and it will continue to do that until the output area is full. Once the output area is full, well, then it will start holding onto the product in its internal warehouse. And once that internal warehouse is full, production will cease. So for example, here, we can hold 18 pallets, I guess now 180 pallets, I should say. We can hold a lot. We can hold 180 pallets internal to the sugar mill after it has filled up this area before it completely shuts down production. But that's not always the case. Like with our dairy, we have a much smaller capacity here, look, of 30,000 liters, 1,000 liters, so 30 pallets in total could be stored inside the dairy. So if you do find yourself overproducing and you can't keep up with selling things, well, auto sell is obviously gonna be probably the answer because product in the factory isn't any money for you. What you're gonna want is you're gonna want product sold, that way you can have revenue. I hope this answered some questions you might have with respect to production and those different output choices of storing, distribution, and selling. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Are you a player that likes to use production heavily? Or are you a player that likes to concentrate on your farming? Or do you like to find a nice even mix? Until next time, happy farming.